I really don't like this kind of stuff. This stuff right here. You might recognize this guy from TikTok, Ari Elkins. He makes these types of videos. Underrated indie songs you forgot about, part four. Yeah, that's not satirical, to my knowledge. If it is, then that is a very admirable commitment to the bit. Basically, this fella has the most vanilla music taste ever and doesn't seem to be aware of that at all. This Instagram comment says it best. I feel like this dude just discovered what music was. It's like getting book recommendations from a toddler who's learning how to read. Okay, I wrote that comment, but admittedly someone else's reply to my comment is even funnier and probably accurate. Now, I don't want to hate without making a broader point. He already gets his fair share of criticism and some noteworthy parodies. Top 10 underrated 90s songs that you should check out, part two. <laughs> But this video isn't going to be shamelessly making fun of this dude for his goofy dancing or anything he can't control. There's something to be said about how happy he seems, which is immensely respectable. I just think his content and TikTok parentheses music curation parentheses is problematic and goes against everything that makes taste making taste making. Now before anyone calls this juvenile or resentment for the younger generation, this dude is literally my same age. The reason I hate this shit is, one, because the music is either terrible, exceptionally bland, or literally the most popular song in whatever genre it is, two, because, you know, I'm a little jealous of the reach this shit gets, but mostly three, because I don't want this type of creator to be shaping music tastes, especially when it feels like he's being paid by big music conglomerates to promote already hugely popular songs. Because part of me thinks he's gotta be just getting a quick bag, because why else would he be making upcoming tours you need to check out for Dua Lipa? Like, there's no way you could actually think that this is helpful or interesting to people. But at the same time, why the fuck would Dua Lipa's team need to pay for this kid to promote her tour? Admittedly, it is hard to talk about indie songs from the 2000s that still slap, because indie doesn't really mean anything. Using the term to mean independent artist doesn't work when everyone that most people listen to is likely already supported by a label. If you listen through Bandcamp or through obscure music recommendations and listening communities, you can probably say that you're a true indie head. But today people use the term mostly to denote music that is more edgy and do-it-yourself and not broadly appealing. Either way, indie is a terrible term because it doesn't describe the music at all, because literally a rap and a folk song can exist in the same category. It's a dumb term that's easy to throw around. But when you make an indie song from the 2000s that still slap video about music that is literally not indie in any sense of the term, a term which, as previously explained, is broader than Amazon, you cannot be forgiven. Mumford & Sons is literally both as broadly appealing as you can get and managed by a subsidiary of Universal Music Group, one of the largest labels I can think of. You really cannot get less indie than dad rock. If this is what you listen to, you should not feel bad, love what you love, but don't share stuff that is already heavily shared without saying anything about it. This is lazy, uninspired, fake content that is just so irritating. And I also don't want to get caught up saying broadly appealing equals bad. I literally had Kiss Me More as my number 10 song of last year. I just don't understand the hive mind of TikTok music curation. And there is no side of TikTok that demonstrates this group think better than rap talk. For those unaware, Rap Talk is a circle jerk of Playboy Cardi fans who all really like six or seven albums, but can stretch that into years of content. This video kind of sums it up immaculately. And the sad part about rap talk, though, is that it's usually right. I mean, Kendrick Lamar is probably the best rapper ever, or at least one of the most talented. Yeezus is a good album, and Radiohead is indeed a band of high quality. And this takes us back to our boy Ari. He does suggest some bangers, some songs perfect for listening in your car with the homies and the hoes. But what's the point? Because to me, it's like suggesting someone try coffee when there are just so many internal and external stimuli that would lead everyone on planet Earth to that point. Kanye West is unavoidable. Popular music is popular music. Rap talk is far more respectable, though. It's just part of growing up. It's like going to the prom or 
taking your first steps or getting your testicles ultrasounded because you're worried you might have testicular cancer. I definitely made way worse content and probably had comparably surface level artistic taste when I was the age of the average rap talker. But I wasn't rewarded for it because that type of content does not deserve to be. If it seems like you enjoy everything, every stupid cookie cutter pop song, or every lazy rock cut, then your credibility as a tastemaker goes down. I think the number one most important quality for a music curator is the ability to critique. And criticism is hard, I do it myself, I'm doing it right now. And it's easy to criticize criticism, but you have to do it if you're trying to position yourself as someone with meaningful opinions. This doesn't mean make a list of songs you despise, just try to make your portfolio a little bit more refined. Unfortunately, as this case proves, TikTok rewards musical complacency, and there's nothing we can really do about it. So maybe, instead of hating, we should just suggest these creators some songs ourselves. Maybe one's a little bit more specific. Thanks guys, I'll see you next time.